What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 64 of Autodesk Fusion. I think this one might be um, the last video or second last video with this series. Uh, and then we're going to start with our top down design. So, what we have so far is went ahead and made a couple of sheets leading off of the last video. So, we've got our title sheet, we've got our first sheet, which has just got our full multi view uh, drawing, and the ISO. I went ahead and made a couple of sheets of what I would consider the sub-assemblies and went ahead and also uh, created um, a bill of materials and um, a, I'll say, a isometric of that as well. I really don't like this one I showed up though because, let's try this again, I'll insert this table in real quick because what I want is I want those balloons. There we go. Those balloons like to automatically populate up and for the most part they're okay. I'm going to show how to do some quick edits on them here soon. That way you can kind of change where the balloons are at. But, so we've got our multi-view, we've got a sub-assembly of the box, all the sides to it. We have our hand, the crankshaft and handle. Now I would consider that another sub-assembly. And then the last one is going to be our cams and the follower rod. So what I've done is kind of leading, stopping right here and showing you how I made those other two uh, sheets as well. So the first thing we're going to click on uh, table. Actually, no, actually what I need to do is I need to bring in a base view drawing here. So we'll click on base view, click on base view. We can create it. As I've been doing these sheets, it creates different versions of it. And so some versions are going to talk about the crankshaft. And so you can reference if you know what you're referencing exactly. Uh, you can click on that one. doesn't really matter in the long run. So I'm going to do one half scale. Let's do a front or sorry, northeast isometric. All right, and then click OK. Now, since I am calling, um, I'm going to say the cams and the follow rod a sub assembly in itself, I know it's not quite the case, but for the sake of this video and some consistency, I'm going to call it a sub assembly. So I'm going to find the drawing file that is mentioned. As you can see, I got a bunch of them right here. Uh, you can rename these if you really want to, um, or just kind of keep track of which one's which. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to find the one that is for my isometric, and I'm going to only choose the handful of things I want to be there. So that's going to be, and hold down the control key on my keyboard, that's going to be the snail cam, the hex cam, circle eccentric, and one of the follower, actually all four follower rods. I'm going to hit right click and I'm going to hit suppress all except selected. And then it's only going to have those right there. Looks good. Now let's do a table. We're going to do a table of this drawing, build materials, and we can see our build materials is right there. What I don't like is I don't like where some of these balloons are showing up at. And so what you can do is you can click on a balloon once you have two boxes that show up. One is where the number is going to be, and the other box allows you to pull and drag to where you want that arrow to be. Now, if you pull it over to a different item, so if I pull this balloon over to the follow rod, it will automatically change to what that number is. So if your arrow is pointing to the wrong thing, it will automatically change. Let's go ahead and bring three on over here and change where that one's at and the rest of them look okay. All right, last one I'm gonna bring in now is I'm gonna bring in the snail cam. So the problem is in the way how we've done this with the bottom up design uh, is you run into a little bit of a problem. Uh, I would say this is redundancy and it's very difficult and we'll see why in a second. I'm gonna do base view again. We're gonna click on this. We're going to create from that first one and we're gonna do right side view. Uh, and then I'm actually going to do a one-to-one -one scale here. Click OK, and then we're done. We see some things in here I don't want to quite see. So if you pull up an old version as a, a different uh, reference something again, you run into some issues. So I found the best case scenarios to be is do a base view, and then just click a new one, create a new. I know it's going to make a long list of these, but for the sake of what we're doing, I find this to be the most helpful because when I go to try to make edits, I know it's not going to affect anything else. 
only what I want it to be. So we'll click on one to one, click OK, and here we go. So I'm going to find my snail cam, right click, suppress all except snail cam, and there we go. So there's a couple things um, that I really don't like about this. You see how my snail cam isn't quite aligned the way I want it to be, and that's because it's referenced in here, uh, back in the original design. Um, so what we're going to do then is I'm actually going to move this over just a little bit, and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to click on Rotate, what we're going to rotate, and where am I going to transform this rotation about? It's going to be the center of that cam. So slowly, I'm going to rotate this until I can get that snail cam pointing downwards. It takes a little bit of finesse to kind of figure that out. But what I didn't like is my hex cam, when it came in, it was already at an angle. And so I tried just to flatten out the best I can to really clean up this drawing file. All right, so next we're going to do is we are going to uh, do our dimensions. So I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. And we'll just dimension some of these holes real quick and so you can depending upon how easy you want to make this for yourself you can uh, dimension how however you really want to or what specifications you're looking for what i found out to be is really letting fusion do a lot of the heavy lifting and so you can go in here and we can say typically each nominal diameter is a quarter inch um, you know, and times it by four, but uh, I find that if we try to show those little shortcuts, um, we run into some other problems. So when you dimension a hole, I guess I should mention is you click on the actual hole and then allows you to put where you want that uh, leader line to go to. Alrighty, those holes look all right. That looks okay. Uh, that looks okay, let's do this one. And then we're also going to need to do what this dimension is. Oh, let's try that again. Dimension this. There we go. I don't like how that's doing that. So what we're going to do then is instead, we're going to dimension the center of this. I don't like how that's doing that. So some, some points this has been, I would say, uh, frustrating to figure out is the small little nuances of fusion. And so I'm gonna probably just say this to that, place this dimension, and I wanna see if I can move this dimension anywhere else. Let's see if I can move. Hmm. Actually, we'll come back to that one later. I don't like how that's popping up, but we'll we'll keep it there for now. Alrighty, that looks okay. And then what I am going to do then is actually I'm going to go back on what I said, and we're going to put I'm going to put in a leader line for the thickness of all these cams. So I'm going to click on leader click on an edge, and then we can type in what it's going to be. So each one is typically, you know, 0 0.25 inches. Um, all right. Um, well, that's going to be it for that. I might try to figure out how to fix this later on. I'm just running into some small little issues on how I used to do things in Inventor, doing things in Fusion, thinking things work out, and you just take some small tweaking to figure out. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to call it done on this video, and this is kind of where it's at. So we've got our front page, we have each of our uh, sub-assemblies with build materials based on the specifications of your teacher or how you as the teacher figure out what you want from your students. We can go from there. The last video I'm going to do here is how to do an exploded view and then throw the exploded view on this drawing file. Alright guys, that'll be it, and I'll catch you on the next video.